I feel like I should say that this video is going to be a bit more lax than the kind of content I usually push out. And if by some chance this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, just know that this isn't quite how I structure my videos, though this is something that is very much from me. Originally I was going to make an update video. Despite getting the community tab last year, thanks by the way, I'm much more partial to making something that feels more uh, genuine and concrete than an extended Twitter post, but as I brainstormed what I wanted to say here, I kind of walked away with something that I believe required a bit more work than something off the cuff, so uh, here I am with a Google Doc actually writing a proper script for this thingy here. I'm sure, as some of you have noticed, there's been a shift in the content that I make in the past few years. Uh, I went from being a sort of cinema snob knockoff back in 2016 to pigeonholing myself into game reviews between mid-2017 to uh, 2019, and then turned into a sort of video game video essayist or whatever in 2020 to basically doing whatever I want in 2021. In fact, uh, with the five videos I made that year in 2021, only uh, a few of them mainly dealt with games, and even then they were just a sort of springboard into a subject matter I wanted to discuss. Uh, th there's two reasons for this shift, the most important being that uh, writing has always been the way I properly express myself. You know, some people make music, some people draw, I write, and that's just the way it is. And using media analysis as a sort of lure to get people to listen to my insane ramblings about more esoteric, nebulous concepts is always fun. Nearly all my video or favorite videos of mine, uh, like the Clerks and Shenmue labor video and this most recent one that I did about the Silver Case and D2 are just that. But uh, the other reason and the one that's more uh, pertinent to this video is that I have generally become kind of disillusioned with the former space I occupied here on this platform as well as a few others. Now, I'm not sure if I can really write this the way I have it in my head, so uh, please bear with me here. Uh, I'm a pretty social person. I actually really enjoy being with people, talking with them, and just fucking around. So when COVID came around in 2020 and uh, screwed everything up, I uh, sort of leaned more into engaging in online spaces as a sort of substitute while I was in quarantine. Uh, I've had Twitter since about 2017, but that wasn't all, uh, I wasn't all that invested in it until, well, then, and you can already kind of tell that that was a huge mistake. Uh, since 2021, I completely shut off my Twitter for good and took my nightmarishly huge and disorganized Discord server out of uh, public reach, I guess that's how you'd phrase that. And basically, the only social media presence I have online is just sort of YouTube and an Instagram account there I uh, sometimes post uh, dumb shit to. And a lot of this is due to the negative atmosphere that is kind of ever-present in online spaces. I think that just about everyone knows that negativity spreads a lot faster than positivity does. In fact, one of the first things you learn when uh, taking journalism or any sort of media class um, is that negativity sells. And that's true on social media as well. Uh, sites like Twitter are all about user engagement. Uh, yeah, yeah, user engagement, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and I'm sure there's some like corporate word like use gaugement or some dumb shit but i really couldn't be bothered to check it up so yeah and one of the best ways to get folks to engage with the site frequently is by uh riling them up i'd argue a good 70 percent of twitter is composed of people expressing their impotent rage to the binary void another 20 percent being misery posting and self lovers and the last uh, 10 percent yeah, is split in half by memes and actually nice stuff. Uh, Twitter's set up in such a way where it becomes enticing to be a snarky and snide, miserable SOB, and no one's immune to it. 
you might think you are, but yeah, if you believe that, you're probably more far far gone than most. Uh, and there, there are many people who are aware of how bad Twitter is and actively voice their disdain for the site, yet still partake in the misery. Just because you're a self-aware addict doesn't negate the problem, so my advice is to log off. Flot Slime did a good video on the matter that goes way more into depth than I ever could, so I'd recommend checking that out. But uh, while Twitter is one of the more visibly like negative sites out there, I can't say that YouTube is all that much better. YouTube is, of course, a social media platform, but what passes as content here is generally just a bit harder to produce than just typing out whatever nonsense you have in your skull right then and there. Still, the best way to attract attention, especially in corners that deal with uh, media, is to get people up in arms over largely inconsequential shit. This is not to say that I am against videos that are critical, far from it. Uh, criticism is a healthy and necessary uh, part of engaging with works in any sort of meaningful way, and that doesn't just stop at uh, surface level observations around mechanics and visuals either. If you feel that games should be considered art by the masses on the same level as, say, literature or film, then criticism of the medium should extend beyond shallow waters. If you get hot and bothered when publications or individuals actually examine a game's messaging, themes, its stances, both political and cultural, and retout by throwing some petulant fint under the guise of not wanting your games filled with politics, and when gamers refer to politics, they really mean racial minorities, women, and queer folks. And I'm sorry to say, but you don't really aid in the growth of the supposed art form. Instead, you actively aid in its corrosion. Uh, you also happen to be a fucking idiot. Aaron Signal said it the best in his video nearly a decade ago, uh, which is titled Keep Your Politics Out of Gamings, in which he said, but a boom Gamers want playing a video game to be a respected way to spend their time. They want to appear cultured for having completed highly praised titles. They want everyone else who ignores games to see how amazing and enrapturing and evocative a game can be. And there is a naive optimism in that I can respect. I mean, I certainly see beauty and expressive potential in systems, and if I didn't, I wouldn't do this show. But the naive optimism is overshadowed by the tantrums thrown when gamers see the reality of games being taken seriously. They want to proclaim their hobby to be art with no strings attached. They want their games to be adulated without also being criticized. They want their games to be hard to play, but not challenging to consume. They want their games to have tremendous power, but without any responsibility. So criticism and critical works, as that long-winded segment right there established, has never been a problem of mine. But blind, negative sensationalism, however, very much is. Look, this kind of thing is nothing new. People have been getting worked up about pretty petty stuff long before the internet, and will continue to do so till, like, the sun explodes. That being said, seeing it everywhere is not really fun. Like, I, I could bury my head in the sand and still hear people screeching and belching over the most trivial stuff imaginable. I mean, it's incredibly easy to get someone angry or feel down. Just about, like, any moron can do that. And these platforms, uh, people build their entire careers off uh, doing just that. In social media spaces, I truly cannot think of any group more parasitic than, like, commentary channels who act as a sort of, like, you know, outrage mongers who whip up their base over the really just non-important, as I said, inconsequential shit. It never builds towards anything, it's just rage for the sake of, well, rage. But my guess is that people flock to this sort of stuff because it at least makes them, like, feel something. I, there is, like, an epidemic of sad, lonely, depressed people on here, on, on the internet. Uh, people that feel incredibly dejected, isolated, and hollow, and fill that void in really any way they can, but the shit they're filling it, that hole with in themselves is just that shit. Anger and bitterness can be a real co corrosive, Jesus, I spelled that wrong, corrosive force, and being in a largely insular environment that 
constantly propagate that uh, that kind of stuff is really bad for you and i should know i was in a similar boat a few years ago when i was really depressed and visiting a therapist uh, i was engaging in similar communities in similar ways like many people i was addicted to it and i realized that the only way i could get out of that was not just limiting my time there but actively removing myself from such spaces and if you see yourself in a similar place i'd recommend doing the same the this video has been filled with tangents so <laughs> let me just kind of wrap it up yeah, in some way this channel was originally made for the purpose of giving myself some way of uh well giving myself expression by talking and examining media i enjoy more than anyone else this channel was made for me but these days, I have an audience, and sure, it's pretty small, but I do feel that I am responsible in some way for how I conduct myself on the channel. And because of that, I, I want this channel to be a largely non-hostile place that isn't participating in the anger circle jerk. Once again, that isn't to say that I won't be making critical, uh, won't be critical of certain media, or that I won't discuss current issues or topics on the political spectrum that I deem important, but I will never make a video about a work or a person I deem bad just for the sake of tearing into them or putting others down for, you know, enjoying the work or the people that made the work, yada yada. You know, so long as it isn't uh, <laughs> fucking snuff films or anything on that creepy fuck spectrum, but I, I don't plan on covering those sort of things anyways, or never was planning on doing that, so yeah. I, I, I've made jokes in the past about doing something like that, primarily having making a dunk video on Half-Life 2, a game that I've admittedly come around to uh, a bit recently. It's not my favorite shooter from that era, but I do enjoy it a fair bit more than I used to. But uh, but then again, almost none of those videos ever got made, because honestly, I don't enjoy wasting my time ripping into something just to rip into something. Uh, I believe there's value in all works, even bad ones, and if I talk about a piece of media I dislike, I want people to walk away from these 20 plus minute video rambles with a bit more than, this is shit, it's so bad, how can it be this bad, Th that kind of stuff. And I think that's all I really needed to say here. Probably could have said it a lot quicker than I did, but I felt like rambling. So, sue me. I just don't want to be a part of something that I genuinely believe affects a lot of people. It's really easy to make people upset, but it's a lot harder to make people feel good. And I hope I can at least make this channel a place where folks can feel at least a bit better finishing a video than they did coming into it. And hopefully that is the case. See you around, folks.